All right, this is eighth grade math. This is page 129 in your book, Solving Two-Step Equations. Now, uh, first off, an equation. Let's do the key vocabulary right here. An equation is, it's just a mathematical sentence. And in a mathematical sentence, it has an equal sign. That's an equation. A solution is the answer. So if I ask for the solution, I want you to solve it. Um, so let's go through and let's do some two-step equations. It's going to combine the things that we have learned uh, so far in solving uh, math or solving equations. So we're going to start out with a real-world um, situation and talk about where our two steps are here. You pay $9.95 to join an internet music club. You pay $0.99 cents for each song that you download. Your cost for joining and downloading some songs is $17.87. How many songs did you download? So let's talk about what you did. You had a cost to join. Plus, you have a cost per song. And depending on how many songs you play, you take that times the number of songs that you're going to get. Now, that total of that equals $17.87 in this case. So what's the cost to join? $9.95. Plus, what's the cost per song? 99 cents times however many songs you purchased, which we don't know, that's what it's asking up here. How many songs? Equals 17.87. So now, if you look at this equation, when we, like the last two lessons we've done, x, there's been only one thing for lack of a better way to say it, attached to the x. Now there's two things. The 995 is added and the 99 cents is multiplied. So as far as being a two-step problem, we have two things to get rid of here. Okay, so the first thing I do on a two-step problem is I find the side with the letter. Okay, and I first, then I get rid of what's added or subtracted. So the 99 cents is multiplied to the x. The 995 is added with this plus. So I first get rid of this. And remember, you undo it. What's the opposite of what it is? That's $9.95. So you take off $9.95 to get rid of it. But remember, we're talking equations. We have to treat both sides equally. So if I subtract 995 from this side, I have to go over here and subtract 995 from this side. So that's going to be a 2, 6, 1, 8, and that's going to be 9, borrow 16 minus 9, that's $7.92. And I still haven't done anything with the 99 cents right there. So now I'm back to what I was, just, just keep reading it out loud, now I have 99 cents times x. What's the opposite of multiplying by 99 cents? It would be to divide by 99 cents. And if I divide the left by 99 cents, I divide the right by 99. The 99's over here cancel out, and x equals whatever $7.92 is divided by 99 cents. So two decimal places over, two decimal places over and up. And 99, that's pretty big. We'll try 8, 2, carry the 7, 72, 79. 7, 92, it's exactly. Eight. So you would get eight songs for $17.87. So let's see how they do it. Cost to join there looks kind of familiar to what we did. We wrote that out. Exactly. Look at that. Exactly the same. They subtracted the 995. They got the 99. They divided by the 99. Now, here's why it's called a two-step problem. The first step was to get rid of what was added or subtracted. The second step is to get rid of what's multiplied or divided. In this case, the 9 was added, so we use subtraction. The 99 was multiplied, so we use division. We use the inverse to get rid of it, so the x right here would be by itself, and we could solve it. Okay. Show how to check the solution in example one. So the answer was eight. 
So if we go back, it costs you $9.95 plus 99 cents per song had to equal 1787. Well, to check it, we are saying that this is eight. So we put the eight in and we still have to follow order of operations. We have to multiply this before we can add this. So 99 cents times eight would be two, carry the seven, seven dollars and 92 cents plus the 9.95. Let's see if it comes out to be 1787. Yep. And that's how I would check it. And let's see what they, let me get rid of that so you guys can see better. They put times eight, they multiplied just like we did, added, and it checks. Okay, number two, what if? Suppose the cost to join and download some songs is $26.78. How does this change the example in number one, find the number of songs? Well, it changes the total cost. It doesn't change. It still costs $9.95 to join. It still costs 99 cents per song. The only thing that's changing is the total cost that you spent. Do I have those numbers right? I do. Now, so solve it. So we know we get rid of the $9. The opposite of adding $9.95 is to subtract $9.95. So those cancel out. I get 99 cents equals three, borrow, seven, eight, nine would be an A. Borrow from that, 15 minus nine is six, $16.83. Now the opposite of multiplying by 99 cents is to divide by 99 cents. Two over, two over and up. 99 into, that goes in there once, which is 99. Subtract, eight, nine would be nine. Six would be six, 93. 99 times, what should we try? Seven, three carry the six, 63 plus six is 69, 693. So you would have bought 17 songs. Let me get rid of that. Okay, there's the subtracting, there's the dividing, 17. Okay, film, you pay $35 in dues to a photo club and $10 per roll you have developed. If you spend $225 during the year, how many a roll of films have you developed? Ooh, look, they're nice to us. They already give us the equation, so we have to solve. So here we find this side, you rewrite the equation. Everybody, 10x plus 35 equals 225. Okay, our job is to get this x by itself. There's two things attached, the 10 and the 35. You always get rid of what's added or subtracted first. So we minus 35 first, because that's been added, minus 35. So zero, one, two, three, it'd be a 90, equals 10x, because these cancel out and you bring down what's left. 10 times x, the opposite of timesing by 10 would be to divide by 10, so x equals nine. So you would have developed nine rolls of film. And it was right. Okay, so check this out. We have a key concept box. It says two operations, some um, equations require two operations to solve. Here's what I need you to remember for the key concept of this. Okay, when there's two operations, to solve, and that means get the letter by itself. You have to get rid of, get rid of what's added or subtracted first, then get rid our of multiplying and or dividing. 
Okay, so first off, I look at here, and there's two operations because x is divided by 2, and there's a minus 14. So there's two things over there. So the first thing I do is get rid of what's added or subtracted. That's x divided by 2 minus 12. So since the 14, the mi not minus 12, sorry, minus 14. Since the 14 is subtracted right there, that's the thing I want to solve or deal with first. So I go through. I go through um, and I get rid of the minus 14. What's the opposite of subtracting 14 would be to add 14. And if I add 14 to this side, I add 14 to this side. Now this is a lot of steps and a lot of thought. So a lot of times people don't like that. So just step by step and you guys will get it. You cross out the 14s, bring down what's left, add over here, I get 22. Now you say it again, x divided by 2. The opposite of dividing by 2 would be to multiply by 2. So x equals 44. And to check our work, 44 divided by 2 minus 14 is supposed to be 8. Let's see. 2 goes into 44 22 times. 22 minus 14 is 8. So it checks. These are fun. They get in there. You just have to get the steps right. Follow the steps. Then, you know, they'll throw some positives and negatives at you just to make you crazy. And x is 44. Look at that. You checked it just like we did. All right, so we look at this one. This one's a little tricky. And I'll explain. It's tricky because of this minus right here. That kind of throws people off a little bit. This is a two-step problem because it's got 12 minus 2 times x. And you'll notice it says solving with a negative coefficient. The coefficient is the number that's with the letter right here. Really, if we boom boom this problem and went boom boom, that's really a negative 2. So we will, first we want to get rid of the 12. But I know that minus right there, everybody automatically wants to add 12. But think about it. If you put a plus 12 underneath right here, would a plus 12 and a plus 12 cancel each other out? They wouldn't. They have to be opposite. They have to be inverse in order to cancel each other out. So to get rid of the 12, you have to minus 12. So I always tell kids, look in front of the number that you're trying to get rid of and do the opposite. Since that's a positive 12, even though it's not written right there, there's no sign, it's positive, you do the opposite would be to minus 12. And if you minus 12 from this side, you have to minus 12 from this side. 8 minus 12, I'd go boom, boom. So that's negative 4. These canceled out equals, now this negative goes with this 2. So you have to bring it down. You can't leave it up there. You have to bring it down. That's very tricky. And then you divide this side by negative 2, because the opposite of multiplying by negative 2 is to divide by negative 2. And you divide this side by negative 2. x equals 2 negatives make a positive when you're dividing positive 2. So we'll check our work. We're supposed to put a 2 in right there, 2 times 2. So 12 minus 2 times 2 is 4. 12 minus 4 is 8. 8 equals 8. All right, let's see how they solve it. There they do, same thing being really careful of the signs. The signs, I mean, you can totally feel like you're doing them right and mess it up because of the signs. All right, so let's, let's do some more guided practice. Here is, um, we find the side with the letter. I need to get rid of both of these. Get rid of the 11 first because it's added to it. So I'm going to minus 11 from this side and minus 11 from this side. I get 2 equals y divided by 3. Um, y divided by 3, the opposite of dividing by 3 is to multiply by 3. So in this case, y equals 6. So let's put it in, a 6 up here. 6 divided by 3 is 2, and 11 plus 2 is 13. Well, that one works. There's our check. I don't know how I make those straight lines right there. All right, so we find the side with the letter. 
remember, the question is, do I get rid of the 5 first or the minus 3? This case, the minus is in front of the 3, so the opposite of subtracting 3 is adding 3. So z minus 5 equals 7. Z div not minus 5, I'm sorry, z divided by 5. The opposite of dividing by 5 is to multiply by 5. So z equals 35. So let's put it in up here. 35 divided by 5 is 7. 7 minus 3 is 4. And it works. So they're checking it. 7 minus 3 is 4. 4 equals 4. Works. OK, 6. I don't know what all this stuff is down here. 6, we go, we got two things attached to the x. Negative 6 times x plus 5. So I get rid of the plus 5 first by minusing 5. Cancel those out. Negative 6x equals 18. Negative 6 times x, the opposite of multiplying is to divide by negative 6 on both sides. Those cancel out. x equals negative 3. Let's put it in right here. Negative 6 times negative 3 is positive 18, plus 5 is 23. So it does check. Negative 3. Oh, look at it fills in the problem right there. Works. 23 equals 23. All right, here's one of those with that negative A in front of it. That's kind of tricky right there. Now that negative goes with the A. It means the A is negative. So to get the A by itself, we got to get rid of the 16. So we look in front of the 16. That's a positive 16. The only way to get, if you have positive $16 in your pocket, the only way to get rid of it is to spend it or to give it to me. So you would, if it's plus 16 there, you minus 16. And you do that on both sides. So 6 minus 16, you boom, boom, that would be negative 10. Those cancel out. The negative goes with the A. And you kind of think that's an unwritten one right there. So the opposite of a negative, or you can say this, the opposite of A, or a negative A, a positive A then would just switch. If we switch the sign here, we switch the sign here. And it would become 10, because we've got to treat both sides equally. So the answer comes out to be 10, and we can check that fast. 16 minus 10 is 6, so it works. Sound good? OK, another one. This one, the 4 is times to the a, so i got to get rid of the 10 first. I look in front of the 10. That's a positive 10. So the only way to get rid of a positive 10 is to subtract 10. Remember, that minus goes with the 4, not with the 10. So I minus 10 on this side. The 10s cancel out. The negative comes down with the 4. I divide by negative 4 on both sides. A equals negative 6. And it works. We put it in there checking it, and it works. OK, we solve the equation again. Um, 8 times w minus 3, so you add 3, add 3, those cancel out, bring down what's left, 21 plus 3 is 24, divide both sides by 8, because that's 8 times w, see it just, after a while it should just become automatic, 3, 8 times 3 is 24, minus 3 is 21, so we're good to go there. Shows should be three. Yep. Well, that one's kind of long in the check, isn't it? All right. Solve the equation again. It is seven times x plus three. So I minus three, minus three. Those cancel out. Seven x equals fourteen. Divide by seven. X equals two. Seven times two is fourteen. 14 plus 3 is 17, so it checks. Good to go. And it's 2. That's what we came up with. Well, here's their check. Boy, don't need to go all out doing that. All right, here we go. 
Ooh, good. Look at this one. This one's kind of a, a, fun, a different one. We have plus one, so we minus one from this side. We minus one from this side. Those cancel out. I get three-fourths m equals six. Now I'm going to teach you a trick on this one. To get rid of the three-fourths, we want to, we basically want it to go to one. We want one m left, just an m, and there's always an unwritten one when you have a letter. So the best way to get rid of one is to multiply by the reciprocal, which would be flip it over. And look what happens. The fours cancel out and the threes cancel out. And that's what we want to have done is cancel those out. So to, when you have a fraction and you're multiplying, just multiply by the reciprocal. But remember, if you do that to the left side, you've got to do that to the right side. So m equals, remember, fractions. So top times top, bottom times bottom. I can cancel the three and the six. Two times four is eight. Three-fourths of eight. 8 over 1, cancel 1, goes in there twice. That's going to be a 6 plus 1 then, to check it, is 7. So let's see what happens here. 7 minus 1, and we're good to go. Oops, did I go too far? I don't think I did. Oh, what are they doing it? They're doing it a little different. I think it's just easier on mine to do it in one step, and we'll, you'll see more of those. We'll get, we'll practice those together. All right, so again, you're writing these equations. They're a little tricky. Please ask if you're stuck. Don't try to do all of them, and make sure you understand how to do these. Don't try to do them without understanding. See you next time.